Oh. What's going on? Oh. What's going on? Oh. What's going on? Oh, hey, Internet. How's it going? This week, Apple's so pissed at a German magazine for bending one of their phones, they've blacklisted them from their PR emails. Forever. I wish I could get every startup mad at me, preemptively. China overtakes America as the world's biggest economy. I'm going to, as a Canadian, offer Americans some advice about living in a country that's not the world's most important. Also, Bill Gates says Bitcoin is better than currency. Wait, did Bill Gates just say Bitcoin isn't a currency? Jerk! All this, plus a first look at the new Smash Brothers. If you love technophilia, but are sick of hearing James, I've got good news for you. He's not here! My name's Justin Pott, I'm in Boulder, Colorado, and you're listening to Technophilia. Keep doing that with me today from Connecticut is Dave LeClaire. How's it going, Dave? I put out a post on Facebook asking people if there's anything they would like to change about the show, and one of the requests yeah. was a James mute button. So yeah, yeah. so we consider your button. request granted, bro. I, I wrote him a very nice letter, and I said he's an asshole, and that we don't really like him, and that uh, we don't want to work with him anymore. It was a really nice. It, it's not coming across right now, but it was a very nice letter. You, you read it, right, Dave? Yeah, yeah, it was good. It was yeah, very it was honorable. It was really polite, yeah. Oh, no, no, he's going to be back next week. He just wasn't feeling up to the show. I, I don't know why, but uh, James Bruce will be back next week. But I want to hear what you're doing, Dave. How are you doing? I'm good. I was just playing some Smash Brothers and whatnot, you know, Smash and yeah. Brothers. Oh, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing about Smash. I haven't, I haven't read much. I, I, I read the list of all the players ranked. I thought that was well done by Kotaku. Uh, uh, my colleague, Ben Stegner, disagreed with me. But I, I thought that was really good rundown. But uh, well, let's get to the tech news, shall we? Yeah, there's not a lot of tech news happening in the world, though. Uh, there's not a lot going on, but I thought this was worth talking about. Well, to, to be fair, Windows announced that their operating system's coming. That's a pretty big deal. But uh, did we talk about that last week? about that last week, yeah. I feel like we talked... That's, that's how little's going on You know, right James now. said about... We, we, yeah, we argued with James about playing Dota on my yeah, phone. Yes, yes, and James yes. was like, you're never gonna play Dota on your phone. And then I was James, like, I'm gonna do just. what I want. And then, you know... <laughs> The guy Every who little believes thing that the world of virtual reality is the future yeah. <laughs> can't accept that you might play a game on your phone. Like, Mr. Future Technology Man can't accept that I could possibly someday play Dota on a phone. You're so excited that he's not cutting you off right now, aren't you? You're just he's like I, He's sitting there right now in his room, you know, wallowing in <laughs> sorrow or whatever, and he's like, God damn it, Dave, he's saying all the shit I disagree with and I can't stop him. Yeah, you watch. He's going to try to log into the Hangout any second now. But for now, we're going to talk... So Apple has blacklisted a German magazine for bending a phone, showing that it's possible. Now, we talked last week how Consumer Reports, which has a long history of trying to beat up on Apple, has said basically, this isn't a thing. Yes, it bends no more than any other phone made out of metal. Maybe plastic's a little stronger. Whatever. This is a non-story, right? But uh, some magazines decided to test it in a magazine in Germany. Uh, Computer Build, it's called. Wait. I hear those are the best. Anyways, they're told you won't get devices for testing purposes, and you're not going to be invited to Apple events in the future. So, you know, Apple... We've talked about this before, how Apple just has so much of the technology press convinced that they need to, for their best interest, stay on Apple's good side, because if you don't have these exclusive builds to test, if you don't have early access to announcements, you're going to lose the hit parade. Everyone's going to get all of their technology news from some other site because you don't have the Apple stuff soon enough. So this is kind of Apple playing the mob here, isn't it? They're just like, hey, that's a pretty nice technology website you have there. It'd be a shame if something did something to make it completely irrelevant so far as internet traffic's concerned. I'm not comfortable with this, but this is the world we've created by obsessively trying to get Apple news before everyone else. D Dave, why, why, why does this happen? I mean, it's not just Apple though. That, that happens in like in all industries, you know. Like, there's all the. It's the, it's not like the crux of the stupid Gamergate nonsense. Is that like? Yeah. The 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 gaming companies have the te the game journalists in their pocket because everyone's afraid to write bad things about the games because then they won't send them their review copies and then they won't. Yeah. Get, you know what I mean? Like. It, You're right, that's and, and we've, we've built a world where there's very few media organizations that are powerful enough to stand up to this kind of nonsense and say, you know what, if you don't play ball with us, you're not going to be featured in the New York Times. Like most tech blogs, most technology magazines, most gaming magazines for that point, don't have the power to stand up for this. So, so if, if a company like Apple, who, uh, I mean, the gaming companies, it's a little different because they also buy a lot of advertising on these same sites, right? That too, yes. 
So the, uh, with the gaming companies, I believe this is the origins of Giant Bomb, isn't it? That, that site exists because a company owned by CBS published a negative review, and the company that made the game basically said, if you're going to publish negative reviews, we're not paying for ads on your site anymore. And that was... That was I might be remembering this a little fuzzy. So you're right. This does happen in gaming. It, it's, it, But Apple's a bit of a different horse because there's so many people so incredibly obsessed with getting Apple information, especially on launch day, that everyone is jockeying for position trying to get Apple information before everyone else. I don't understand it personally. I've talked about this for years, but it's kind of a death sentence for a technology blog that prides itself on live coverage. I mean, pretty and, much what it comes down to is the, the people making the product Mm -hmm. is more powerful than the people reviewing the product with the yeah. exception of a few things like like you said like the new york times like if they said yeah. we're not going to feature apple that would hurt apple you're but right if we they, they said we're not going to feature apple apple would say who are you yeah are you kidding there's so many websites that are in line to try to cover our stuff why would we care yeah about exactly you do so it comes down to the powers in the hands of the makers of the product not in the yeah. hands of the media that reviews the products yeah, and I gotta think this is an ongoing thing. I'm pretty sure from what I've read about Edison, he was probably a jerk to any press organization that told him or reviewed anything he did negatively, right? I, I don't have any evidence there. It's just a gut feeling. Maybe we should so, call yeah. him and ask him on the phone. Uh, you want you want me to call Edison? Yeah, call him up. Uh, I'm, okay. Uh, on the phone. You got his get number. Get him on Skype right now? What's his Skype name? Uh, Skype wasn't invented yet. He's oh. a regular phone. No, oh, well, I don't... I Telegraph, don't maybe? Phone. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Telegraph. <laughs> we'll get Edison on the line a little later to ask him how he dealt with the press. Now, I, I do know Edison, famously, if there was no news going on, they would send a young reporter over to his shop, and Edison would just talk and talk, and eventually he'd say something hilarious, and they'd just publish that. So he definitely had a close relationship with the press, and I wonder if that relationship would be put in jeopardy if he's saying something. All this is only to say I don't think this is a new problem, but the amount of media hype that builds up in the lead-up to any kind of Apple release is, to me, just insane. Uh, Smarty, in the chat room, put it well, I believe. He said, Windows announces their new S, no one bats an eye. Apple announces a new iPad, everyone loses their mind. And from what I've seen of this new OS and this new iPad, the new OS is a much bigger deal in terms of how it's going to affect people's lives. But there's something about Apple that just has everyone convinced to this day that if they don't cover this event, they're going to miss the next biggest thing in technology. And to be fair, they've done the next biggest thing in technology enough times that it's not completely irrational, but I'm, I'm sick of it, as I've expressed in weeks past. So, you know, Apple's basically acting, acting like the mob. Be nice to Apple or they will blacklist you. Sorry, news organizations. I'm depressed by this one. You want to move on, Dave? Yeah, it's sad news. Okay. Poor German magazine. Yeah, sorry, guys. So HP is splitting into two companies, apparently. This was announced earlier this week. One company is going to be the one you're probably familiar with if you're listening to this podcast. They make laptops and printers, beloved by children everywhere. Right, Dave? I think this is the, the wrong story is linked to here. There's something about millennials, and there's a picture I of Zuckerberg. definitely linked to the wrong story. Here <laughs> I'm like, I'm trying to look about more information yeah. about this. I'm like, why is Zuckerberg there? Yeah, definitely linked to the wrong story. Anyways, uh, HP splitting into two companies. One's going to be consumer-facing, which is going to make uh, laptops, printers, the kinds of stuff, uh, if you're listening to this, you're likely to buy. The other one's going to be business-facing. They're going to do uh, uh, cloud services, I suppose, just enterprise-grade stuff. So these are two different companies now. Weren't Probably... they already, like, two companies with, like, HP and Compact or something, or...? No, no, no. Okay, so Compaq was a separate company completely that also made laptops that HP acquired sometime last decade. I don't have the dates down. And for a while, they did use the Compaq brand, but that was definitely a subset of HP. Yeah, it was like the so, cheap computers were... Yeah, yeah. Compaq. Well, well HP, HP also, also made, made cheap computers on their own. Some of that is the legacy of the When the I Compaq say cheap, brand. I mean shitty. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I... I I used to fix computers for a living, and anything that said HP Media Edition on it would just die for no reason. Right after warranty expired, this is what HP Media Center computer, HP Media Laptop, sorry. We had a stack of five of these things, motherboard just dead in the back of our office. We weren't even that big of a place, so. HP definitely made some cheap machines, but if you get the business grade stuff, it's actually pretty good. It's not bad. 
right? So like most companies, they've got both. I don't, I don't know if the business grade laptops are part of the new company. I don't think so. I think the laptops, yeah, the laptops and printers are one company and there's going to be another company. So the current CEO of HP could end up with one company or another. It's not clear at this point. It's interesting. There's been a lot of companies splitting up in the past week. Dave, did you notice about PayPal? No, PayPal is not, what are they, not a part of eBay anymore or something? They're going to split off eBay, yeah. There's been, well, that's uh, great uh, because that's bullshit that eBay controlled both of those companies. And every time I sell something on eBay, it makes me mad yeah. that I got to pay two fees when I know yeah. they're both going <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to the same freaking place anyway. That's a good point. Yeah, that was frustrating. So yeah, PayPal is no longer going to be part of eBay. There, there is an activist investor, Carl Arcan, I believe, who's been on eBay's ass about this for a long time, saying basically PayPal's a better company than eBay, and it's being held back by being connected to this. Because PayPal, leading force in terms of online commerce, right? Like most people who spend money online are familiar with PayPal. Uh, I'd say a lot of them use it, right? Yeah. I, I mean, pretty I much my... any freelancer of worker is using eBay for something. A PayPal, I mean, you mean? PayPal, not eBay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But eBay kind of losing to Amazon in terms of buying stuff online. When's the last time you actually bid on something on eBay, Dave? I, I actually have something listed for sale with one bid on it right now. Right, right now. now. And I just sold two things uh, last week. I'm, I'm getting out of the Atari and, and television and ColecoVision uh, collecting, so I am selling all of that stuff. Hmm. So I picked out some of my rare games, sold them separately, and then I have a lot of... Uh, uh, systems, games, and stuff so, so for $290. So if anybody wants some Atari stuff, <laughs> I'm going to put a link in right. the chat and you can bid this, on my Atari stuff. This is eBay's big thing, I think. It's, it's niche products, right? Being sold from one user to another. Whereas Amazon, a lot of people used to set up stores on eBay, but I think Amazon's taken over that section of the market almost completely. Right? I can't remember. There aren't that many stores that are operating on eBay anymore, are there? You probably know better than me, especially in your space of uh, retro And there, there's games. people who like, you know, like video game resellers who just mm. kind of function on eBay and yeah. that's where they, you know, like uh, or people who do like flea market stuff, you know, if they find something okay. like really, really valuable, they'll put it up on eBay because it's, you know you have a very limited market if you're trying to sell something for a thousand dollars at a flea market, you know? Yeah, so, so it gives you a global audience. It's definitely I, like a, a lot of collector type things uh, on eBay because Amazon perhaps. doesn't really do much of that kind of stuff. Amazon is where you go to buy new stuff. More yeah, you want you want an Xbox One game, you go to Amazon. You want a NES game, you go to eBay. Definitely, definitely. So, anyways, eBay not growing as fast as PayPal, I'd argue. PayPal. Also lost out, though, because they were going to have a big deal with Apple to get onto the iPhone for that new paying platform, and that fell through epically. I think investors are a little mad about that, so it's splitting off. But coming back to HP, which started this whole story, uh, in the chat room, uh, CG Findies, I, I have no idea what that means. He says, I'm kind of disappointed the two companies aren't called Hewlett and Packard. Yeah, real missed opportunity there, guys. You screwed up. No, Wait, well, which one would be which though? Hey, which one sounds let's more? Let's give up fifty years of brand recognition for a nice, clever trick here. Then I, they I could be H and P. One of the companies could just be H. Like, yo, the I got my new H computer. Two different companies. Yeah, bro, bro my new computer, man. Check it out. It's from H. <laughs> That's so stupid. That's so dumb. And, and Kashi points out HP printer, everybody loves them. Well, yeah, I've got an HP printer, and it definitely broke right after the warranty, which I think is an amazing feature. I wish more printers had this breaking immediately after the warranty expires feature. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible what they've done in that space. You know the thing with printers, Dave? I hate printers. It's amazing how we've got these computers now in the palm of our hands, more powerful than supercomputers from 20 years ago, but printers are just as shitty, if not shittier, than they've ever been. It's mind-blowing. They never get better. They never improve. Because there's I think... less reason to print things. Yeah, I guess so. It would just be really nice to have a printer I can buy now and use for 20 years and not have it break. Like, but I don't know also... how... When I was in school, we said to print our, like, papers and stuff. I assume yeah. now that kids just like give their teacher a thumb drive or something when they want to turn uh, in like a paper a I lot don't know. of kids 
are using Google Drive. A lot of classrooms yeah, are using Google so, Drive. Yeah, so... What are you printing, yeah, really? Unless you're shipping things, you need to print a shipping label, or... I my, mean... my printer's been essentially broken for six months, and I, I keep saying, ah, I should get a new printer. And then never needing to print things, so I never think of it. And then the other day, I did need to print something, and it just started working again. So I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> see, not getting a new back. printer. HP H has your back, bro. P, yeah, not so glad, much, but H glad got I H waited. Got but you. then a week later, I tried printing something again, and it, it stopped again. <laughs> I think the oh, only well. thing I print is when we got to ship out a product review. I, I print the label from USPS, and then then the printer yeah. sits dormant for another couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, man. But it, it's amazing. So. I do some volunteer work and there's a real generational divide on this because if, if I have a piece of paper in my hand, I'm, I'm going to lose it. Right. But this other older generation, I'd say 50 older than that. If you email them something, they're going to lose it. Whereas if you email me something, I will respond to it. I will, I will get whatever you're asking me done. Usually within 24 hours. If you hand me a piece of paper, I will put it on my desk. I will forget it's there. And two months later, you'll ask me about it. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, I probably have a piece of paper somewhere, don't I? It's gotten so bad. Like, I'm, I'm, t- I'm contemplating scanning papers people hand to me and emailing them to myself so that it's somewhere I can act on it. But anyways, older generations, exact opposite. You email them, they're going to lose it. They have no idea what's in their inbox. I'm that way with paper. I don't know how to deal with paper. I can't live with it. So Paper takes I, up I, a lot of space. Physical space. I can't and deal with it. And it kills the trees, man. What about the trees? Well, computers uh, are carbon emitting machines. Basically. You're a carbon emitting machine. A uh, CG Findy says, "Just think of me if Scudderman," and I'm like, "Okay, I can do that. I can handle that." I'll Wait, is that Scudderman? It is Scudderman. He's just using a different Twitter handle today. Really relevant content for our audio listeners to be hearing here. Uh, let's move on, guys. Bill Gates has gone on the record saying Bitcoin is better than currency. Uh, you guys are probably quite familiar with the work Bill Gates has been doing in Africa, trying to do a lot to make life on that continent better. We, we've talked before in the past how long after Steve Jobs has been forgotten, there's probably going to be statues of Bill Gates all over the world because of the good work he's doing in terms of giving his money away. Uh, but he's, he's been thinking about issues in third world countries a lot. And, and in, in Africa right now, sending money mobile, I'd say, is much more common than it is here. There are banks set up where you can send money by sending a text, right? Anyways, so, so within that context, Bill Gates was talking about uh, Bitcoin. Someone asked him about it on Bloomberg's TV Smart Street Show. And he said it's better than currency in that you don't have to be physically in the same place for large transactions. Currency can get pretty inconvenient in that way. But he uh, kind of stepped back saying that... Uh, what we don't care about when it comes to uh, Bitcoin is being anonymous. We don't want these things to be anonymous. So it's not ideal in that way. But Bitcoin is ideal in that it is a currency that you can use without being restrained by physical location. And it's not restrained by country either, right? Because sending money, even from the United States to Canada, can kind of be a pain in the ass because of all the transfers in the banking system. Bitcoin lets you work around that. All this is to say that more voices in the mainstream are recognizing Bitcoin's practical uses. And I would like to see these emphasized more than the ideological, more than the crypto, just the pure practical uses of cryptocurrencies. I, I'd like to see more mentions like this in prominent mainstream publications. So, you know, good on Bill Gates for being level-headed on this one. You going to buy the next version of Windows with a Bitcoin? Is that the plan? <laughs> well, how involved is my, Bill even with Microsoft at this point? I'm sure he's still know. involved in taking plenty of money from the... Well, he, he owns a lot of stock, but he sold a lot of it and given the money away. I just don't know the extent of his involvement anymore. I think he's on the board. I'm sure they consult. I, like, if they if they all yeah. of a sudden wanted to be like, we're not going to make operating systems anymore. I feel like he'd probably still yeah. be like, um, guys, uh, yeah. yeah, we are. That's what we do. So yeah. if you could not say dumb shit you know like i uh my, 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 microsoft though i mean balmer has gone right he, he's running a, a basketball team now bill gates is probably the most prominent public figure i don't even know the name of the new ceo microsoft's name yeah <laughs> to be honest i can't recall right now i should probably get on that i should know that but i don't it's, it's, so, yeah. is it really that important though should you know it like does it affect your life in any way if you don't know who the ceo of microsoft is no 
It's no, like we're ever going to interview him on Technophilia or, or he or she. I don't even actually know if it's a, a male or a female, but it's, whoever it it's, is. It's, uh, it's, it's a like... guy, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but, yeah. You're right. It doesn't affect my life in any way, but I feel like it's a piece of information I should know. So I feel bad about it, Dave. This well, is let's, the kind of stuff I Let's feel look bad it up about. live in living color. It's uh, a <laughs> okay. uh, Satai. Oh, I don't know how to say his first name. Satya Nadella. Oh, yeah, yeah, Satya Nadella. He's been with Microsoft forever. Okay, now I know. There that's we go. The, that's the big dog. Well, speaking of big dogs, uh, I don't know if you got the memo today, but the U.S. is number two. As of today, the IMF has said that China has overtaken the USA as the world's biggest economy. Now, just to be clear, this isn't in terms of total spending power, in terms of the value of the currency. It's in terms of what... So if you take the total number of Chinese people and companies, what they can use their money to buy in practical terms right now in that country, there's more spending power there than there is in America. But if everyone were to meet in Europe and try to spend all their money there, America would have more money because their currency is worth more on the global market. So a little confusing, but basically uh, China's overtaken the U.S. in at least one way. And, and you know what? I've been thinking a lot about this. Dave, and I, and I thought I'd give a little bit of advice. So Americans are taught from the moment they're born that they live in the greatest country on earth, if not in all of human history, am I right? That is, that is what we are told. Yeah, we yeah. you're, you're taught that democracy, freedom, truth, and morality itself depend on your country's continued well-being, am I right? Sure. Yeah, sure. That America is a very big deal, and pretty much every day you're told this, to the extent you think your country can and should solve every problem that happens everywhere on Earth. To the extent that even people who don't like the current president, whoever that might be, blame him for pretty much everything. From weather, to overseas poverty, to disease. Americans believe their country has the power to determine reality. Meaning anything that goes wrong is the president's fault. Am I wrong here, Dave? Um... I don't know that that part is all true, yeah. but it's close. it's close. It's close. It's close. Okay. So this might all just seem normal to an American, but I'm not American. I don't know if you've noticed. I, I just live here. I'm actually Canadian. And one of the best things about Canada to me is at the end of the day, it's just Canada. You don't have to take yourself too seriously because no one else is paying attention. Which brings me to this bit of news that we talked about before. China surpassed America as the world's biggest economy, at least in terms of purchasing power. It's probably going to take China a while to catch up in terms of absolute value of currency, but it kind of seems inevitable at this point. Now, America's seen itself as the most powerful country in the world for so long, I'm not sure this news will set in for decades. But you're just going to have to face it. In some ways, you are no longer the most important country in the world. Dave, you no longer live in the most important country in the world, in at least one way. Now, America's pretty important... But by no means is it the only important country anymore. A world's a big place, and America's one force among many. I'm not saying America's not great or doesn't have ideals every nation should aspire to. They are, and they do. But I'm saying that you don't get to claim you're great just because of who you are anymore. You need, as a country, to prove that you're great, or no one's going to believe you. So, a little bit of advice. T take it, take it as you will. I I'm not going to be in charge or anything. I'm just kind of saying something. Get some shit done. I know you guys are used to thinking about your political system as the most important thing in the world, but there's no reason you all have to be jackasses to each other. Instead of constantly talking about how you have the best system in the world, then consistently failing to live up to the promise of said system, try getting some legislation passed. Maybe passing a budget. It won't fix everything, but it might help with the general feeling of existential dread that currently surrounds the political process. J just a thought, guys. And I know this doesn't have a lot to do with technology, but bear with me. If you occasionally want to feel like the most important nation in the world, I have a suggestion, okay? As a Canadian, this is my advice. Find a single sport you're really good at, then compete against the world in that sport every four years. For Canada, it's hockey, and every time we beat you, Dave, at that sport, we get ecstatic for one day. We're better than you, and it's awesome, and then the next day we go back to not mattering, and that's awesome too. You should find one thing you're really, really good at, and get excited about beating China at it. Baseball, maybe? I, I don't know. It's up to you guys. That doesn't seem fair. Does China even <laughs> think... play baseball? I don't know. Who cares? Did you guys play hockey? I, I don't know. I mean, Anyways. we just had people from Canada move down here and then built the <laughs> hockey a team from around that. Point being, Dave. Just Do we have to move a bunch of baseball players to China to make it fair? I sure, don't... maybe. The point is, just beat them at baseball every four years, and you'll feel really good about it. 
It's it, it's awesome. So that's just a little bit of friendly advice. I love you, America. I, I love living here. Keep keep being awesome. Just uh, maybe try to earn that awesome instead of just. I like, thought that what we do in America is we just go and we just like invade the country that we want I to don't, feel better than. I don't think you're gonna be able to invade China. I'm not saying it's a good idea or anything. I just that's what I always assumed that we did whenever we had like we wanted to feel superior or something. No, is that not the case? Is that <laughs> that's. That's, you know, it hasn't worked out since Vietnam, though. When's the last time invading somewhere else made America feel really good about uh, itself? I, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, that's really worked out in terms of America. I, mean, I didn't say, like I said, I didn't say it was a good <laughs> idea or that it worked well. Yeah, I just yeah. think that's what we do when we're mad at somebody for whatever reason. It's like, oh, fuck it, let's no, go. I, I was... I was thinking about this, though. Even in terms of IPOs in the technology world, right? Everyone was more excited about Alibaba this year than any other one. Uh, Yahoo, a prominent American technology company that many say is on the decline, is now a very rich company because they had a bunch of Alibaba stocks. So basically, like, like one of America's most prominent technology companies is only worth anything because they happen to own a bunch of stock in a Chinese company. It's... The world's changing is all I'm saying. I'm not saying America's not awesome. It is. But you gotta, you got to kind of step up, work a little harder, prove that awesome. I, well, I'll work on it. <laughs> oh, uh, so coming back around to the UK, our friend Scutterman has launched an app. And he's got a link for it in the chat room. It's called Witty Later. It allows you to... You, you know, sometimes, Dave, when you're talking to someone and they they burn you and you don't think of a witty comeback but then like an hour later you finally think of a comeback to that statement so the idea with scutterman's app here which you can get for 237 on google play right now is that when you think of it later you just send them a message and they get it i think it connects to facebook uh scutterman do you have uh, coupons or anything i think it's just on sale right now he put it's it just on sale okay okay Anyways, just thought I'd give that a little plug. He's Why don't you put that on a real app store, it. Scudder Man? One that people actually <laughs> use, bro. You know, I had so to the say. sale price is coming up later. He says Google's Play is terrible for selling stuff. Yeah, but if you, I, put, it on, excuse me, if you put it on the app store, everything would be great. Well, let's get that onto the outline. Because a technophiliac made an app, and we support our technophiliacs. I don't like the fact I don't I can't verify that this is Scudder Man and I don't know how I feel about that. What if this is just some random? He definitely guy? posted it as himself on Facebook earlier last week. Are you sure? So, are you sure totally is, sure? Are you sure this guy did not hack Scudder Man? Did someone hack your Facebook and your Twitter? Account? Yeah, and is is using he no he hacked his Facebook but couldn't hack okay. his Twitter. Wow! So he's using this fake Twitter account pretending to be Scudder Man to get like okay. one extra sale for his. <laughs> I don't think that's it, dude. Why wouldn't he just hack your Twitter account to get that extra sale, Dave? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along from maybe potentially tens of dollars in sales from, from the Technophilia plug to a uh, billion dollars. That's the amount Microsoft got from Samsung for Android royalties alone last year. Serious question, Dave. Is Microsoft making more money on Android than Google? I have no idea if that's true or not, but a billion dollars for doing no work is staggering, amazing. Microsoft is uh, the world's most successful patent troll, I think. That's, I don't know if I'd call them a I, patent troll. No, in this case. maybe not. I'd say legitimate but they, patent owner. In but they, they, they did nothing to build Android. They're just getting paid a lot of money in licensing agreements because they feel Android violates their patents. And this is why people hate software patents, to be honest. Google made a piece of software. They made it free to the world. And Microsoft's like, hey, if you want to use that free software, you have to pay us. I, I don't see how this is good for the global economy, but maybe I'm wrong. Also, oh, uh, verification on Twitter. We just got a note from Scutterman saying, hey, I'm also known as this other guy. So there you go. Mystery solved, dude. I believed him all along. I, I don't, don't believe, believe that you believed him. I, I would never question like Scudder Man. He scuts. Scudder Man. He's he's. I, we should rank all of the Technophilia fans, and I think Scudderman's up there. Well, it's got to be Koshi's number one, obviously. And then I don't, I don't know. I don't know. 
I think Scudderman's up there. Higher than Koshi? Koshi's like our original fan. He's like when we when he was our first fan like we ever had outside of like you're right. And he's still one of the only ones. But I don't know. Scudderman, Smarty, they give him a run for it. That's all I'm saying. Smarty's too young. He's like twelve. <laughs> Can't even vote. Uh, I like all of you. Although guys. apparently he can drink in his country at like twelve, so whatever. That's Belgium. That's how it works. Europe's awesome. Drinking, driving, and doing hookers at twelve years old in Belgium. Drinking and driving's not okay anywhere, dude. I don't well, no, no, no. Drinking and then driving are two separate events, as is doing the oh, hookers. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying he's drinking and driving. I think I think you can drink before you learn to drive in a lot of European countries, which is probably a better system. Because you don't want to be, like, driving for three years and then discover alcohol. I think that's kind of messed up when you think about it. It's, All of a sudden, uh, yeah. It's more than three years. It's, like, uh, five years. Sorry, I was thinking you can't about drink, Canada again. Yeah, you can't drink till 21. So you have, you get your license at 16, and then you can't drink for five years. The, the Leafs are back as of tonight, and I'm just in full-on Canada mode. I so can't, are the I Flyers. Can't Screw the Leafs. <laughs> yeah. We're going to kick your ass this year, dude. Moving right along, Google wants to get rid of apps. They're saying apps, that's the past, the future, is the Internet of Things, where everything's going to talk nicely to each other without the need for separate apps. Now, I think we are in an era of app overload. Every restaurant, every, like, bar, everyone thinks they need to have their own app, to have their own branded experience, and really, the vast majority of apps that are installed on phones are opened once and then ignored, if you look at the analytics. So... Maybe there is a future without apps. There's a project on GitHub right now that will be, quote, an approach to unleash the core superpower of the web, interaction on demand. I didn't put this story here, Dave. I gotta say, I don't fully understand it. Uh, do you? Because James is gone, and I'm lost. This is beyond the, my mm. knowledge range. This we is need... beyond your knowledge. So anyways, uh, I just saw that it was just a little project someone put on GitHub. And uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Kind of exciting, I guess. We'll see how the future goes. Yeah, I don't know. Why would Google, the owner of like the second biggest app store, though, want to get rid of apps? I mean, it kind of sounds like they're going back to Apple's original vision for the iPhone, which is HTML5 apps, and that really didn't work out. So they have to find something better than that. I don't know what it is. And, uh, yeah. I feel like they probably make a lot of money selling apps. apps. Almost certainly. So Almost it seems like counterintuitive to want to give her. And that'd be like. Speaking of making a lot of money selling apps. So, Apple, which is by some measures the biggest company on the planet, right? They certainly have a lot of cash sitting around. Uh, they famously charge for subscriptions if you process them through an app on their platform, right? So if you want a subscription to the New York Times and you buy it through the New York Times app on the iPhone, legally the New York Times has to give Apple a cut. Not just up front, not just one time, for every month of your subscription. Which is ridiculous when you think about it, right? Which is why I think the New York Times doesn't sell subscriptions through their app. You have to go to the website, and then you can sign in and get it. So I, I was looking through the forums for RDO, which is like a Spotify alternative. It's a lot cleaner. You used RDO? Uh, yeah, I tried it. I, I stick yeah. with Spotify, though. I, I think I prefer RDO myself. But apparently... If you I buy thought it was pronounced radio. You know what? They they have ads on their service, and they all pronounce it RDO. So oh. I'm gonna, yeah. Wow, I've been saying... Man, I feel dumb now. I've been saying radio this whole time, just assuming yeah, it was one of those... It's RDO. Who knew, right? Anyways. Delete the vowel things. A subscription is usually $10. It's $5 if you only want to use it on the desktop. $10 for the complete subscription. Unless you install the RDO app on your iPhone and sign up for a subscription there. Then it's 15. They have to give one third to Apple, so they just up their price by one third. How is this a good experience for Apple's users? I don't think Apple cares personally because their users are so rich that they're just gonna pay the extra five bucks without so much as Googling it. But you can, so, yeah, you can still pay for it on the web and use it on your iPhone. Just, yeah, yeah, just, it's only just if you if want the you convenience sign up with of doing purchase. it. It's just amazing how much of the crap Apple pulls is this kind of thing. Just, <laughs> you don't know any better. You're going to do it this way. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that that's, I guess, I mean, Apple's got to make money. It's an extra five bucks a month that you're paying for that service. Just yeah, for the five, convenience it's not even five not bucks, it's five bucks every month. 
So it's 60 bucks a year extra that you're paying just for the convenience of not having to open up a desktop computer and sign up there. It's amazing. And, and I'm sure people do it. And this is why Apple's so rich, because their users are kind of willing to spend money for extremely minor conveniences, I think is how I'd put it. Yeah. And there's no. There's I don't know no if it's that they're willing, it's just that they're too stupid to look elsewhere. I'm really trying to not call people stupid. I like calling people but. stupid, it's fun. <laughs> Fair enough, dude. Fair enough. Uh, Twitter, moving right along, is suing the U.S. government. This is an interesting story. So, the U.S. government pretty much tells every company that operates a lot of data on the web, that you, you've got to give us some of that data because we need it to protect the country or whatever, right? Now, Twitter, yes. all they want to do is broadcast to the world how much information they have to give up. But the U.S. government also tells people, no, you can't reveal how much information you're giving away because that is a national security issue. That's going to be giving too much information away to the people who want to do America harm. You can't do that. Twitter's suing, basically saying, we have the right to free speech. If we want to tell people how much of our information we're giving to you, we should have the right to do that. Make, make sense? Seems fair. So, yeah, uh, this is a pretty important case. I'm firmly on Twitter's camp for this one. I, I, I don't think they should have to give this information up, and I think it would be in Twitter's best interest to make it so they can't give that information up, which is what we talked about Apple last week doing, Dave. They, they encrypted the phone, and they basically told the FBI and everyone, look, we can't unlock it. We don't know. We just don't know. To me, Twitter should do that, but they're an advertising-supported social network. They can't do that. They need to track your data so that they can put appropriate ads on your feed and make you buy stuff. That's their end game. This is why I'm kind of excited about LO. I'm not convinced they're gonna to stick to it long term. I, I would like a social network that says, we're not going to give anyone your information because we don't know it. We, we, we just don't have access to it, would be the ideal. But anyways, that's not what Twitter's doing. Anyways, I'm kind of on Twitter's side with this. I think if they have to give information up to the US government, they should be able to say from the rooftops, here is the information we had to give up. I, I think that's fair enough. We'll see. I think this is going to be in the court system for quite a while. There's a lot of questions tied up with this. Anytime you're talking about national security and surveillance and suing there's, there's the government in the where the government is the court system that will decide whether or not you can win the uh, America's got a pretty good history of distinct separation of yeah, powers. They are they do have this the judicial system and who would be the one they're suing? I I think it's the executive branch. I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I feel so, like the judicial system is going to be like, ah, we can stick it to these bastards. Everybody thinks they're the important ones. We'll see who's got the power now, and they're going <laughs> to give it, let Twitter win. The, the judicial system has proven itself quite powerful. Just this week, they legalized gay marriage in most of the country by deciding not to wake up. And uh, I don't want to do that this week. So it just became legal just because they didn't want to do anything. So, you know, judicial branch, pretty powerful. I wish my inaction was that powerful i wish by deciding not to write an article i could change the world but uh that's maybe sadly well, not to be. if you think about it maybe yeah. in some you might not even know it but maybe yeah. you do because maybe maybe you some guy you would have wrote an article yeah and it would have gotten published in like three days and yeah. some guy would have read it and mm -hmm. while he was it, reading it yeah uh he would have gotten sick or something and okay. then he would have, I don't know, spread his sickness to his wife, who then went to work and spread his sickness. But by him not reading your article, he was upstairs in bed, keeping his sickness contained, and then it didn't spread to a whole office full of people, and no one got the flu. Yeah. Wow, wow. you're right. See? You know what? I'm not going to write an article this But the afternoon. problem is, you won't know yeah. that ever happened. Yeah, you're right. The, 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 the Supreme Court decides not to uh, issue a ruling and they can read in the newspaper the next day that but because of that the whole country's changed forever. Yeah, you're just I, beat. I, you just have like you just have the the hope in your mind that maybe you're not writing an article did something but you'll never know. Yeah. You're right. It's totally different. Well, there you go. Anyways, Twitter suing the US government. We'll see how this all works out. Hopefully, uh reason will prevail and they'll be able to just say exactly how much information they're giving away. I, I don't know what any criminal is going to do. Oh, they had to give up 20,000 private messages. Well, that means mine's probably not in there. I'm going to keep committing crimes. Like, I, I just don't see. It's not so maybe saying I'm... they're not going to send exactly what messages were given. It's just that 
We gave yeah, Twitter's one. just gonna be like at mob boss dude. Yo, <laughs> we Yo, just bro. had to give your stuff up to the feds. Yo, bro, just so you know, the feds are on ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. I better stop. No, you can see that. You I can see this that. Informant. And there, there's historical precedent for this kind of question, right? Because the phone company, you don't want the phone company being like, by the way, your line is being tapped. I repeat, your line is being tapped. Like that would defeat the purpose of tapping the line, right? But but for the phone company to say we tapped twenty thousand lines last year is, is is a different question, right? So we'll see how this all works out. It's there's a lot of lines to figure out. You know where there isn't a line, though, where, where uh, we should just try to be as secure as possible is ATM machines, right? Pretty common. We talked earlier this year about how 50% of the world's ATM machines are still using XP, even though there's no security updates for that. Now, I don't know if this is related, but apparently millions of dollars have been in stolen from credit cards uh, just that are infected. The way you do it... You, you, you got to get physical access to the machine, you got to get into it, and you can put a CD in there and put malware on it. And you can basically make it spit out money, like crazy. Make it rain. So, obvious problem there. Once you've got physical access to a machine, though, you're pretty much in anyways, right? So I don't know how serious this is, but uh, video footage shows that uh, people were using this to cash in machines. Now, is nope, this taking money go. from people's accounts, or just it's just taking money? I'm whatever. just making the machine spit out money. That's it. It's not it's not taking from anyone's account. Just the machine. So far as the bank knows, the next day the money's there, but it isn't. Hmm. And it's straight up bank robbery, basically. Yeah, Except that's uh, yeah. That, which which eventually. Well, I guess it really. And so in the end, there's really no way this ends up hurting. Uh, end users of the bank i guess i mean your deposits if you happen to be an american are insured by the fdic right that's why when a bank's robbed you don't get a notice from the bank being like okay our eyes our bank was robbed everyone loses five dollars this month like, like that that never happens right your deposits are guaranteed uh in, in exchange the fdic requires the banks have pretty good security so i imagine there's going to be some awkward phone calls to it people this week is is my suspicion yeah. That's, uh, I mean, because the FDIC's got to pay all this. This comes out yeah. of their pocket, right? I mean, the bank is well, paying yeah, they... FDIC insurance, but yeah. you know, still. Still pretty crazy how insecure these systems we all depend on every day are. Even, Say I mean, what you there's will. There's even, like, basic like stuff like ATM skimming that doesn't even involve, like, malware. It's just, like, a little thing you can put on it. And it... that steals from people, though. The ATM skimming where they, like, they have the thing that like reads your card and gets your pin and stuff like that when you put it in the yeah. machine. But that's actually taking your money from your account. That's not just shitting out whatever's in the machine. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, speaking of this kind of credit card fraud, we talked about a year ago about this upcoming hardware device called Coin. You remember this? Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, basically, for those who don't know, it would allow you, as someone with too many credit cards to scan all your credit cards into a little device that uh, works like a card, right? So you can tap between your five different credit cards, pick which one you want to pay with, hand it to the waiter at the restaurant, they'll swipe that, and it'll be just like they swipe the card. Uh, I pointed out at the time that this is basically a fraud machine anyone could use to copy credit cards and then use it to buy stuff at the store down the street without any kind of proper identification because your name's not on the thing. And it seemed like no one was talking about this, but for some reason, this device, which was supposed to be out last summer, is still not on the market. So I'm wondering if fraud is catching up to them. I don't know. I don't they actually just, know. They There's a new one that just anything. hit Kickstarter. Another one like... That, that copies the credit card? No, no, no. It's, yeah, it's basically the same as that. Hmm. Don't give it money, people. It's not a good idea. What's going to solve this problem is going to be an established company inventing an alternative to the credit card that has inbuilt security. Wouldn't that be the Apple Making... Pay thing? Apple Pay is a good bet because it's it's piggybacking on existing technology. Yeah, just... The magnetic strips are a problem. Magnetic strips are not secure. So any system that depends on magnetic strips to update your wallet is not a good long-term investment. And it opens up all kinds of fraud questions that will probably lead to the death of the magnetic strip as a way to process cards. People in Europe, people in India even, are laughing at us for still using magnetic strips instead of having little S or, uh, chips in the cards that uh, the computer can detect by proximity. Not so, only do they suck for that, they don't last very yeah. long. 
No, they get they get worn out. You can't put your phone in your pocket beside them because it'll wipe it apparently. And yeah, I think the only valid way to use a magnetic strip is a hotel key card. Everything else, you really shouldn't be using that. It sucks. Yep. If Apple Pay is good, yeah. I will most certainly adapt to that. And this new thing is called I mean, plastic, by the way. P l a s t c. If you want to plastic. Look it up. I mean, it's it's limited because it's only on iOS devices, and I don't see Apple putting out an Android app for Apple Play. I just don't. So that that's going to limit it to a certain extent. But what I'm excited about is stores adding the capability of using Apple Play to everything, and then maybe that'll open up a protocol for a number of different competitors in this space, right? Yeah, I think so. And I mean, as long as they all use the same... Um... All that really matters is that the thing that has to be put in the stores is the same. Yeah. You so know? I went to my bank's ATM machine the other day, and it was... You, you know how the ATMs will have advertising on the screen before you insert your card? All Apple Play. They're really hyping it. I think they were working oh, are with you, a lot of Do banks. you have Wells Fargo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. I, I went to a Wells Fargo ATM machine yesterday and was like, the future is now! You, yeah, well, the yeah future they're is really soon. excited about it. They're really excited about it. Yeah, they and they apparently have partnered heavily with Apple at Wells Fargo. Isn't that so interesting? I, I'm wondering how many banks that's true of. If, if, if one of your banks has these ads up now, let me know. I don't know if it's just America or what. Is, is Apple Pay going to be in Europe? Do you know? I don't know. Um, I don't think they specific... Did they specifically say where it was rolling out? I think they just kind of said, like, it's coming I, or whatever. It's probably the U.S. to start with. It's usually the U.S. to start with. Maybe Canada. Apparently Chase but. must be uh, the big one for Apple, because if you go to the Apple Pay website, on the simulated screen, there's a giant Chase card mm. in City. That's a bank, too, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but they also do credit card yeah. and stuff. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, almost. and then there's the participating bank. So it's... Um, it's Wells Fargo, City, Chase, Capital One, Bank of America, and American Express are the ones that oh, are. Oh, there you go. So we are in the, we are in the future, man. We are in the cool people club of the Apple Pay with our Wells well, Fargo. Well, I don't, I don't own any Apple devices, so I. Can't well, you're not in the club. future, then, bro. Get out of my I'm house. In the past, I'm gonna keep using my credit cards. Somehow, this uh, Kashi is not in on the chat this room list. says, "America, get a chip." Totally agree. It's ridiculous that we're still here. Does he mean a chip like a NFC thing? Yeah, I think like in the credit cards so that you don't need to swipe the magnetic strip because that's the real problem, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's definitely the... I mean, it's, it's a huge security vulnerability. I mean, it, it's nice that they have security. Like, if someone steals your credit card and buys a bunch of stuff because it's a credit card, you're going to get that back, right? Whereas if someone steals your wallet and spends your cash, the cash is just gone, right? So it's it's better it's better than using cash, I guess. But there are downsides to credit cards, which we could talk about. I I personally, none of them really affect me. If you pay your bill every month, there's no downsides at all, so far as I can tell. If but, you pay your bill every yeah. month, you just get free money if your card has rewards. Yeah, you that, use that's, it, collect that's rewards, my situation. get it back. That's yeah, yeah. That's my situation. I get like four percent back on food. So rewards are good. Pretty awesome. Yeah, I like rewards. I like credit cards. People in Europe don't. They're like, just use a bank card. And I'm like, well, they're not sending me a check, so no. But it does cost the stores more if I use a credit card than if I pay with it. I don't know about bank cards. Uh, bank debit cards is uh, debit is cheaper than um, than For the credit. store? Yes, but uh, okay. it obviously still has a fee. Usually debit is a... Uh, I used to work for a guy that sold uh, payment processing. He was like... Okay, he, he okay. Uh, debit's so, usually so, so. Uh, like a straight flat fee, like 25 okay. cents or whatever. And then oh. credit is usually like a straight a flat percentage. fee plus a percentage of the transaction. So oh, that sucks. Yeah, that debit sucks. is usually cheaper unless it's like something. So if I use a credit card to buy one dollar worth of carrots, I should probably feel like really, really bad. Yeah, I generally try to avoid doing that when possible. Like I try to <laughs> either give them a debit card or or. But Dave, they're gonna give me pennies in my change, and that infuriates me. Well, I generally don't. The problem is, I don't usually have cash to pay them, even if yeah, I want to. Yeah. So a lot of times, I'll just go buy extra stuff. Like, well, I'm gonna need this other stuff eventually. <laughs> so just because I feel like such a douche, because I know they're gonna, they're literally not yeah. gonna make a profit on that transaction yeah, after yeah. whatever they paid for the item plus the fees. They're gonna lose money on. I'm like, I'm not. I don't want to do that. I feel like a jerk. 
I, I, I know what it's like to want to make money, and uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, okay, well, credit cards are I'll, dumb. I'll buy some uh, tomatoes or something to. Uh, You're gonna need those there. tomatoes eventually, man. You might as well just buy them. Dude, I've got free plants giving me free tomatoes right outside my window here. That's true. <laughs> potatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. Let's call the whole thing off. So, uh, Comcast news now. This is mandatory. Apparently, Comcast got a guy fired from his job for calling and complaining about service. Uh, guy says he didn't say who he worked for. Apparently, the Comcast representative just called up his employers and said, hey, this guy was kind of a dick to me. Can you fire him? And he lost his job. This is outrageous. If this is true, wow, that's crazy. So you can't, you can't call your cable company and complain or you might lose your job. Who knows? Uh, Dave, I'd fire you immediately if I heard you mistreated a Comcast representative because I, I love Comcast. Yeah, they're the best. That's yeah, really amazing. That's really weird, and I don't know that I believe this, but I mean, it's from Slash Dot, which is legitimate. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well put, well put. Uh, the article was on Consumerist, which is more legitimate than Slash Dot. Hey, I'd Slash say. Dot is perfectly legitimate. They've been around since uh, like they, the they dawn like, of the they internet. To shit, that's not true. I love that Slash Dot is old enough that you can dig up embarrassing quotes about the iPod. Flashdot you know is old one? as balls. Yeah. Their site looks oh. old as balls, too. Apparently, we're on the new beta site, and it still looks like it's from 1997. It still looks ancient, doesn't it? How did they it do really this? Does. We're on the beta new site, and it's still old. Yeah. It's still... Well, they don't want to change their brand too much. Yeah, let's keep it old and shitty. <laughs> so, oh, oh, we got a theory about credit cards in the chat room here, okay, from Scutterman. He's saying, we like cards so much because our cash is ridiculous. The lowest note is $1, which is about $0.65 cents in terms of pound sterling. Our lowest note is $5, much simpler. You know what? Yeah, I, I think having a $1 bill is ridiculous. You, you need some coins down here. My wife disagrees, like hardcore. She likes the bills because they're lighter in her pocket. Yeah, I don't like then, coins. I want the dollar. I miss the loonies and the toonies. I think I've mentioned this before, but I think I, yeah. I, think I said that I would prefer it if we just rounded everything to a dollar. And just, we got to get rid of pennies. If everything rounded Having to pennies, everything cost either you know one dollar, two dollar, three dollar, four dollar, five dollar, the world would be better. I'd say I'd say keep quarters, keep quarters. Have everything at twenty five cents, and then have dollar coins. You know you know what's crazy though. Okay, we had America had pennies about a hundred years ago, and at that point you could like buy something with a penny, right? Because the money was worth way more. We still have pennies. And it would be the equivalent of, in 1900, having like a one-eighteenth of a cent coin. Which is stupid and ridiculous, and why would you do that? But having pennies now is just the same. Well, so they would have to completely change the way they price everything to get rid of pennies, because you get it as change. Nope, they did it in Canada. The If you pay cash, it rounds up or down, depending on which is closer. Well, that would be good. And I would be fine with that. So you don't get change. And the stores are all responsible for mailing all the pennies they get to the U.S. Mint. The, the, they get paid for the postage, I think. And the Mint is... Uh, not the U.S. Mint, obviously. The right, Canadian yeah, yeah. I know and they're melting mean. them down. They're melting them down. Uh, so if you have pennies, you can still spend them. Stores still have to take them, but the store can't keep it and give it back to you as change. They have to send it away to get rid of it. And, you know, pennies are just gone. But if you pay with a credit card, it'll still be like 97 cents. But if you pay cash, you, you just... Uh, don't get those two cents back in your change, I guess. It's, uh, I don't know. I would prefer if you just rounded everything to a dollar still, but. A dollar? <laughs> Let's I just don't want coins, dimes, man. They're quarters, heavy and they, they, you know, they fall out of my pocket and then it's. I, are you one of those people who has like an ashtray just full of all of your change? And if you uh, were to actually count it, it'd be like a hundred bucks, but. You no, just I have, will. I have more than an ashtray. I have a big giant water jug. Oh, you've got the water jug. I can go get it if you would like. It take me two seconds. I'll show it to you. It's ginormous. Do it. Do it. Right. Show me the water jug. You talk to yeah, I want to see this. Okay, I'm gonna keep talking. I I think it's hilarious that he's got that much money, just sitting around. We used to have a money summarizing machine. Like you could dump it in there, and it would sort of. Oh! Whoa! Oh, I thought it'd be full. It's not full okay. yet, but there's That's still. That's pretty legit, though. This is that a glass bottle? It is. It is a glass. It's an antique glass bottle from 
That's amazing. You should fill that up and then take it to one of those Coinstar machines at Walmart or something on a forklift. Just go beep. beep. It's it's already very heavy, but I'm yeah. estimating it, it doesn't look that full, but I'm estimating there's probably a couple hundred dollars in there. Shake shake it a little for the audio folks. It's hard to shake. It's heavy. He's he's having trouble picking it up. I, I would say there's got to be like a hundred bucks worth of change in there already. It's mostly quarters, quarters so it, it's it's oh, a good crap. it's a good <laughs> amount of uh, of change. Jess says that's our honeymoon. Dude, is there fun. no arcade near your house? Like you could use there those is quarters not. up pretty quickly. We're saving. It's for the honeymoon, bro. When we get married, you you should come to Colorado. There's a pinball museum not far from my house. I've heard about that place. And we could we could go spend all the quarters at the pinball museum. Someday I'll be going to Colorado to ski. So when I do, we'll go there. We'll go play pinball with all your quarters. Well, Sweet. deal. Jess won't let me use the quarters, but we'll have to get because <laughs> they're they're your honeymoon they're the honeymoon fun. fun but it. we can get other quarters. <laughs> okay, we can get other quarters. Oh man, I just thought we'd use up the quarters while you're around. You know, you're gonna fly with that huge jump. Yeah, imagine that. It would cost me more than what's in there to check <laughs> that in the bag. It's thing. Maybe like, why do you have? A I'm picturing it going jug? through the line at security. Eh, is there any metal? Oh yes. uh, no, sir! There's no metal in here. It's uh, <laughs> these are plastic coins. <laughs> it's all good. Ah, let's move on to the gaming news. Da -da -da -da. Wait, what's the new song for Smash Brothers? I think I was singing the old one. Anyway, Smash Brothers 3DS. It's here right now. I don't have it. Dave, how is it? It's really good. It's it's yeah? surprisingly good. It's better than I would have expected for being yeah. on a portable system. It yeah. uh. It's got the classic mode, it's got the new Smash Run mode, so it's got some stuff to keep you busy, you know, yeah. plenty of unlocks and different things like that, and it works well on the controls, which is and I did it'll not put think. you at an unfair advantage when Smash comes out for the Wii U, because you're gonna have three months of practice. Maybe. It might Maybe. put you at a disadvantage because you'll be used to the weird to the controls, you know. Mm. It does control differently. Mm. Um, slightly okay. differently. But I definitely would recommend it to anybody. Although I will say I have not played a single online game yet, so I What's can't the really. What have you been doing? Just one, one player Smash? Oh, uh, I've been doing. Yeah, I've been trying to do all the challenges to unlock all the characters and all the stages and stuff. Oh, that's God. what I always do whenever I get a new. Like whenever I got, um, when I got like melee. That's you know spend all my time just doing that first. Because yeah, I feel that's like what you I don't own the game too, until so. you've unlocked everything. That's true. So who are the characters that you can unlock? Um, let me pull up the list. Uh, so okay. far I've unlocked the Jigglypuff. There's like different skins. <laughs> the Jigglypuff is the worst. There's um, why, why is she even in the game? Uh, let's see. What else can you unlock? There's like a Dark Pit instead of regular Pit. Um, Wait, is regular Pit just gone? No, he's there. He's just, you just have okay. to unlock Dark Pit. Um, Got it. Let's see, there's uh, the Duck Hunt Dog. Captain Falcon is an unlockable. With, with a duck on his back, right? Is, is the Duck Hunt Dog any good? I know, I haven't unlocked him yet. He's like the oh, last God. unlock. You have to do a ton of stuff to get him. There's okay. uh, Luigi is an unlock, but you unlock Luigi like instantaneously. Like he's yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. one time playing through a mode. Uh, Ness is another one. Who's unlocked? Ness. So you got the usual unlocks. Is Mega Man there by default? Or you gotta, Mega Man you is earn. there by default. Okay, okay. There's, cool. uh, there's you know, plenty of stuff. So there, there's some new characters that are getting a lot of attention. Uh, apparently, Bowser Jr. is just incredible. Have you been playing with him? Well, I think he's an unlockable, actually, that I don't have yet. Oh, you don't have him yet. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't have him. Um, my favorite characters are still um, Fox and Falco. Okay. Because they play like okay. the same, and those are my favorites from all of melee. And uh, yeah, so you main Fox mostly. Yeah, and I like Captain Falcon too. He's fun. Okay. Okay. Oh, I thought you said Falco. I like Falco. I like Falco from yeah. Star yeah. Fox, and then Captain yeah. Falcon. You know, Falcon Punch. I like him as well. So, so the thing I love about Smash Brothers, I mean, it's just video game history kind of all combined into one thing. But about a year ago. It was a bit to get together with my family, and we were playing the older Smash Brothers and talking about all the different characters. 
And all of the cousins, we totally were following the conversation, getting along, and my aunt's just sitting there, and it's like, it's like you people have another language. And to us, it's like 25 years of culture, right? Yeah, and All exactly. these characters are beloved, and they have no idea who these people are. It's But if you're into video games, it's amazing, because just everyone's together in one place, and yeah. So but James probably of, has no um, idea who any of these people are. Some of the other Stupid important jackass. unlocks I missed are Wario, yeah. uh, Lucina, Ooh. Rob yeah. the yeah. Robot, Ganondorf, Mr. Game & Watch... Uh, Dr. You've got Mario. some work to do, brother. Dr. Mario's back. That's exciting. Yep. That one was actually a pain in the butt for me to unlock because um, you have to beat the game on four or higher difficulty, four out of ten, as Mario, which four is like not the, hard, the... but I'm awful at with Mario. So Ooh, I had a hard time yeah. getting Dr. Mario just because of the fact that I had to beat the game with Mario. So once you have all the characters unlocked, then you're going to start with the online play? Because that's really what I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, I mean, I'll was. play with Ben whenever he's around to, like, to play a game now, but I just haven't bothered with, like, matchmaking with random people yet. So Sweet. Once I, I mean, if when I, I have Ben's friend code, and my friend Wes just got his copy from Amazon, because he apparently didn't even know mm. that Nintendo had an eShop where you can buy it digitally. So he's like, yeah, <laughs> so man, I just it. ordered on Amazon. It'll be here in like three days. I was like, um, why didn't you just buy a digital copy? He's like, I thought Nintendo didn't do that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Well, so that, I'll play online with them. I'm just not going to play with random people till I unlock everything. Awesome. It's so good, though. You should really well, get it if you... Um, I don't have a 3DS. Well, you should get a 3DS or a 2DS and then get it. Oh, you could do it on a 2DS. The 2DS looks kind of awkward and not portable. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's more portable than like a, a, a Wii U. That's true. That's true. I, I think I'd rather buy a Wii U, though, than buy a portable system. If, if I'm going to buy a system just for Smash, I'd rather get the Wii U, personally. I like playing with other people in person, like sitting together. You could do that on a just, DS. Oh, it's got ad hoc no, local head-to-head, uh, -head, as long as they all have their own game and, and well yeah and everyone needs their own thing that's not right. ideal so also the other yeah. part of this is that uh the news part is that the game as you may expect was pretty successful yeah. um it yeah. sold 2.8 million units in uh Holy what is this in, like, the first uh when, what is the, the and this isn't even the full smash brothers experience right this is the portable one that's kind of like the preview the running up although so, to be fair the um the 3DS has a larger install base of potential players than the Wii U. Definitely, Definitely. but do you think people playing this are going to be satisfied with this experience? Personally, I am. I have, playing this, yeah. I don't feel like I need the Wii U one, other than the fact of playing on the same TV with my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel as though the rest of this experience is, is perfectly satisfying, and I don't think I need to buy a Wii U. I don't own a Wii U. If I owned one, I would you get don't it. Own a Wii. But yeah. 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 Well, I'm wondering how many people this will convince to buy a Wii U. But Mario Kart would have done that for a lot of the younger people. Smash is more for the hardcore gamers, more in our demographic, right? Yeah, it depends how well how this serves it. as a competitive game, too. Like, they got yeah. rid of, like, the tripping it, bullshit and stuff, so that's good. Well, we'll see how it all works out for Nintendo. This is a pretty big... If this doesn't work, the new Zelda is kind of their last... Hail Mary for the platform. Yep, and uh, it's coming, uh, the Wii U one is coming on November 21st, so they finally announced November the November 21st, so there you go. I think it's December over in the UK. Yeah, they, 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 everyone's like, if they haven't announced a release date yet, is it really going to come this year? But apparently they just announced the release date a month before it comes because they're Nintendo and they they're, can do that. They're not going to not have it out before Christmas this year. Yeah, but most companies it's, announce yeah. their game's release dates months in advance, but Nintendo is like, ah, screw it. 30 days is enough notice. Nintendo thinks they're the Apple of video games. They, Apple will announce kind of a new are. phone and then sell it. Like, yeah, they, same mentality. I'm hearing myself echo back on your end. I don't know if you forgot to wear headphones or something. It might be screwing up the recording. I did forget to wear headphones. That's not a good idea. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Eh, I should have said this be earlier. Too. Okay, well, you're the editor, so whatever. Ubisoft is making Assassin's Creed run the same on the Xbox One and the PS4. This despite the fact that one of these two is vastly superior to the other. The Xbox One has better graphics in theory, but it's being held back no, that's by backwards. the PS4. No, that's backwards. The PS4 has oh. better graphics in theory. Got it. See, I'm an idiot. I shouldn't be summarizing these stories. I don't know. <laughs> so the PS4 has better graphics in theory, but 
they're getting a shitty game because they just wanted to make the same game. I mean, that's shitty. Right? It's it's 900p at 30 frames a second. Like, it's still going to look really good. It's just, yeah. it's not 1080p, 60 frames okay. a second, which is what you may have hoped for. Um, yeah. But they're saying that they want the same specs on both to avoid the debates. But there's no avoiding the debates because if the specs were different, then people are going to be mad that they're different. If they're the same, people are going to be mad that they're the same. Yeah, you're right. But Ubisoft but why, has said that. Why they would did they be mad if it's different? Specs. Because you bought the, sh- the the console with worse specs. Of course, you're going to get worse specs on your games. Like, why why would anyone be upset about that? Ah, who knows? People are angry. Okay. Gamergate, well, bro. Gamergate. Oh, dude. Speaking of Gamergate, what the hell, Intel. What what are you doing? I don't know, That's... but now now gamer see I I completely ignored Gamergate because I thought it was yeah. all stupid, but all of a yeah. sudden it's coming home to me now and it's making me pay attention because now they're accusing Giant Bomb, so <laughs> really now it has come really? to the site that matters to me, and now uh, I'm forced see? to acknowledge its existence. First they came for Gama Sutra and I did not care because I was not a Gama Sutra reader. Then they uh, then they came for Giant Bomb and there was no one left to stop them. Yeah, it's once sad. they come to well, like leave Giant yeah. of all the sites, Giant Bomb is like the least shitty. Like leave them alone. Yeah, yeah like, seriously. They actually make their money from people who like them and are willing to pay for their content. Yeah, they're I mean, mad they're because cozy apparently with the industry. Um, you have to be to get all those review copies of games, right? But. I feel like they're pretty level-headed and fair when they talk about these games. Also, like, they don't even, like, put... Half the time, they don't even put, like, day one reviews at Giant Bomb. They review them whenever they feel like it because people will read it regardless because it's them. But they're saying something... Apparently, Jeff said something about... At uh, at PAX, he said how people who identify with the word gamer are stupid and need to grow up or something, and they're all mad about that. Oh, grow up, guys. Grow up. He I, I cannot them. believe... He basically was I don't saying think they that realize... You shouldn't, you shouldn't let your hobby be your identity, is what he was saying, and they got all angry yeah. about it. Oh, my. So. Yeah. I mean, every uh, lots of people let their hobby be their identity, right? I, I, I'm sure we've all met people who introduce themselves as people who are really into horses or really into knitting or whatever. But uh, no one feels compelled to be a jackass because they're into knitting, right? I've never met anyone who's like, you're not a real knitter. <laughs> Like, like, I, I've just never, I've You're never the heard advertising an revenue say control that. what you knit, man. <laughs> <laughs> you Are you gonna to do everything Country Garden magazine tells bees. you? <laughs> yeah, that doesn't yeah, that, that, that's, that's yeah, it doesn't happen. It just doesn't. So, no, you 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 tweeted this week that uh, you stumbled upon a GamerGate subreddit, and now you don't want to be called a gamer anymore. So. It's their fault if people don't like the word gamer anymore because they've identified it with uh, unpleasant aspects of humanity. Yep, you know, and but, that's, you why know I, that's why I stumbled upon it was from Giant yeah. Bomb. That's how I... Mm. But to me, if you play games, you're a gamer. That's it. And if anyone disputes this definition, it's English, dude. You play games, you're a gamer. That's it. I don't care what your gender is. I don't care what your stance on. I believe the dictionary definition of gamer policy. is probably one who plays games. Yes. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna check with the uh, dictionary on my computer right now. Define gamer. If it is even an actual word. Gamer in the dictionary is. I'm gonna read this for you. Uh, I'm on thesaurus mode. I gotta switch over to dictionary. A person who plays a game or games. Typically, a participant in a computer or role-playing game. Or in sports, a person known for consistently making a strong effort. So, there you go. If you play games, particularly electronic games, but also RPGs, uh, you're a gamer. And what that, if I'm a gamer it. who likes opening and closing gates? Does that make me a member of Gamergate? <laughs> Definitely. In fact, one of my favorite games is to uh, go to people's houses, open their gates, and run away. It's I like think that's that's what the true spirit of Gamergate should be. Gate simulator instead of yeah, goat simulator. <laughs> we could make a gate simulator and call it like Gamergate. Yeah, but then they'd come after us, and we don't. I don't want them yeah. to come after us. Well, you know what? They're not going to come after us because we're irrelevant. So we can say what we want here. This You'd man be surprised is not how a real shit gets mid. back to these losers, man. They have no lives, yeah? so. Oh shit! Well, 
And I just I insulted them and said they have no lives. So there's that. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of like, I don't know about that. It's too late now. We've already I, crossed I, the bridge, I bro. I understand the need to identify yourself with something. But being upset because people are saying, you know what, maybe we should be more inclusive. Maybe I'm misinterpreting this. Maybe I'm misinterpreting this. But I haven't found anything compelling from these people yet. I just, I just haven't. Well, the main Maybe thing they're, because... they're mad about is supposed corruption. That's the main beef with Gamergate from what I've understood recently is that they're mad that these gaming websites are... They say that all the game journalism is corrupt or whatever, and it's stupid. Start your own blog. Like, you know how much it costs to start a website? Like, 50 bucks a month for, like, a decent server. Just do it yourself. Much. Do a better job than them. Just do it, okay? Stop bitching and make something. Yeah. But no one's going to read it because they're blinded by the mainstream media. Yeah, well, maybe that's not a problem then to most people. Do a better job. That's, yeah. Yeah, so on that, on that subreddit, there was a whole thing of they were all, like, plotting and planning about how they're going to try to figure out who Giant Bomb uses for their ad network and then oh issue a bunch of complaints to get them to pull their ads from Giant Bomb. That's apparently their new Seriously? thing. Seriously? So, fortunately, Giant Bomb has a back revenue to fall on to. Also, yeah. I don't but, know if they but, know this. No, but I, like... I can't believe Intel caved into this, right? And then they said, ah. I don't know. Giant Bomb is owned by CBS. That's a pretty powerful company. That's not some... It's. Not Gama Sutra. Yeah. This is CBS, like a multi-billion yeah. dollar corporation that is not going to just like bend over and be like, Oh, you beat us, gamers. Zoinks, you win this time. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. <laughs> well, and I'm sure a lot of their advertising deals are tied into uh, like television. Right? Yeah, exactly. So some a, so... Bunch of, a bunch of whiny gamers is not going to put a, a, is not gonna stop CBS from getting their ads. But I'm not, I'm not clear as to why they're mad. I mean, Gama Sutra had a, what I thought was a great column that said gamers are over, and that's what they're mad about. And did you read this column, Dave? No, I personally don't like was... Lee Alexander, so I didn't read it. But I don't know anything about this person's She's background. She's been around for a long time. Really? Mm -hmm. But that column was incredible. I mean, basically saying, look, you, you, you identify as a gamer. Uh, lots of people are playing video games now. You can't claim the mantle of games as exclusively yours because it's not. Lots of people play. That's going to change the kinds of games that get made. You should get used to it. Gamer is over, was her point. Like... like you don't control the industry anymore. It's going to go in a lot of different directions. And what you think of as gaming will over time become a niche is kind of what I got out of it. She said it much better than I can. But that that's a really good article. And the fact that they got punished for publishing it in this way, to me, is ridiculous. Yep. Whether I like Just, Lee Alexander or not, it's still dumb. For you to argue that like we need more free speech, the right to say whatever we want, and then go after someone for expressing an opinion, it's... I, I, I don't know. It's complicated. There's a lot of complicating factors. But let's move on to something a little simpler. Apparently, there's going to be a Mist TV show. Dave, did you ever play Mist back in the day? Uh, I didn't play it when it like came out. So when I tried to go yeah. back and play it, I didn't quite get it. It's hard to understand now. But in 1995, the world of video games was not terribly compelling from a story point of view. Mist was a... a, a, a point-and-click adventure basically but really different from the point-and-click adventures of the time it created this whole elaborate world centered primarily around one island but you could explore and find a lot more and there wasn't much of a manual nothing was explained you just were dropped into this environment and you had to figure it out and there was a bunch of sequels that were pretty similar a uh, point-and-click adventures not as big as they used to be but at the time this was a big deal it was the best-selling game of the 20th century i think it's still Mist in its sequels ranks up high in terms of the best-selling games of all time. And apparently they're going to make a TV show on it. I'm really skeptical. I, don't, I think the plot just seemed deep because video games at the time didn't really have one. Maybe yeah, I'm they'll wrong. They'll expand I mean, it and make it interesting, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, there are Mist novels. My, my wife, Kathy, has never played a Mist game in her life, but she's got a book about mist on her shelf that she read and really liked so maybe there's a lot more background here that they could do yeah, anyways not? i think there's more to work with to make a mist tv show than there is to work with to make a tetris movie so from that perspective probably a good call but we'll, we'll see interesting yeah. 
I, I Hopefully would, they don't I would screw watch it up. It. You'd watch a Mist TV show? Yeah, Did you not? ever beat Mist? I mean, I, I'm not. I don't have a huge love for the franchise or anything like that. But, yeah. You know, yeah. I've but it could seen be interesting. enough of the game to see that the world that it's in looks cool. So that's it's a, a very good well constructed point right world there for a TV show. I feel like I should play Mist again sometime. I know they made like a 3D version you can walk around in instead of the point and click. One. I think there's like a new Mist or something that's like the same yeah. game but better. It's real Mist, I think it's called. Real Mist. That sounds yeah. That sounds good. Real Mist, where, where they made it, they updated it. It's on Steam. It's inconsistently rated. It looks like it's just six bucks. So if you're curious, you could check that out. I guess. Yeah. Oh, dude, I think. I think we've done it. I think we've done a pretty good show, even without James. Well, to I think be fair, this is the, the show best. is always better without James. I think this is the best you and I have done on our own, though. I really do. James is generally just, you know, a Hol- blob of uselessness. Uh, I and know what? Opinions. We need James, because he contradicts me. You know, I, they always say that an opinion can't be wrong, but whoever said that yeah. has never met James. <laughs> I didn't meet James. <laughs> <laughs> Once you meet Windows James, 10 you is what going a wrong to flop spectacularly, is. but you know what the future is? The future is the Oculus Rift. We're all going to be using that for everything in like two years. Human interaction yep. will die. Yeah, we'll just be rifting. Yeah. Smash each other. Brothers is stupid. Yo, bro, hit there me on my rift, man. <laughs> you want to fight? You got beef with me? All right, let's take it out in Rift World, son. Yeah, like a hockey game, a fight starts breaking out, and it's take it up, take it to the rift, Guys, boys. Get after the, the game, get it. They, they, take in the it to the, the rift. The ref comes out with his <laughs> rift, puts them on the players. Like, All right, Put go. the rift on them. No concussions here. Done. Yeah. So why don't you take? Why don't you give us some kind of conclusion of this show so I have an end point? Well, Dave and I had a lot of fun talking to you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, I would highly recommend heading to uh, twitter.com slash thetechnophilia to get updates from us throughout the week. If you want to see those same tweets but in Facebook form, you can go to facebook.com slash technophilia podcast. Connect with us there. We'll even talk back to you a little bit. You can follow me at jhpot. You can follow Dave at Sidox. Talk with us throughout the week. Interact with us. It's the friggin' future we're in. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, if you don't know, we do a live show once a week. It's a, a 1 p.m. in the Eastern Time Zone in the United States. It's, it's 11 where I am in Colorado, a.m. It, it's a lot of fun. You should stop by. You, you can leave it open in the background tab. Have Excel open. Make it look like you're doing stuff at work. And uh, you can occasionally chat with us. It's in... We interact with it live on the show. We really like the guys who show up. Thanks for showing up, everyone. And uh, we look forward to talking to you next week. James Bruce will return. See ya. Bye. You're listening to Techno. You're listening to Techno. You're listening to Techno. 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 Well, I don't know who assigned that arbitrary rule that you can't drink in the morning, but I say bullshit. Should we move on to the news then? Or you got something else? We'll see. Get off the internet and get to work. I'm too perfect anyway. I got nothing to fix. You're listening to Technophilia. Keep doing that. Techno, 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 tech